Okay, hi everybody. Um, I hope you had a nice break. Um, we are going to start today with momentum. Um, so if I just pop back out here for two seconds. Uh, we've done velocity and we did the experiment. We did acceleration and we did horizontal acceleration and then we did an experiment on horizontal acceleration and then we did acceleration due to gravity. So kind of in the vertical plane. And then we did the experiment on that. So the next experiment we're going to do is momentum. Okay, so today I just want to introduce momentum to you and um on so between today and oh is it Wednesday? Yeah, so I'd say between today and Wednesday we'll need two theory classes to get through momentum and then next Thursday we'll do the experiment. Um <laughs> and then I think we've only one more mechanics experiment. I'm not sure how many weeks we've left. Um okay. So momentum. So the way I think about momentum, and this is not like a proper definition or anything, but momentum is how hard it is to stop something. So if you have like, I don't know, an object rolling down a hill or a car driving down a road or whatever, um, the kind of size of its momentum would be a measure of how hard it is to stop. Yeah. So, for example, if you think about like a um, a double decker bus going at sixty kilometers per hour and a car going at sixty kilometers per hour, which one would be harder to stop? Or you could even think of it: which one would find it harder to stop? Do you know what I mean? So, which one would be harder to stop? It would be um, the double decker bus would be harder to stop. Um, the reason the double decker bus, and um, if I I know. If I was there, you'd be able to answer this because I've taught this quite a few times. But, like, why is the double decker bus harder to stop than the car, even though they're both traveling at the same speed? The reason is because the double decker bus is bigger. Okay. And from in a physics sense, we say, is this on the page? Yeah. We have a bigger, or the double decker bus, sorry, has a bigger mass. Yeah. So that means if you were to put it on a scales, if you were to put the double decker bus and the car on the scales, the double decker bus would give a bigger reading. Yeah? So mass is one thing. Um, if you're particularly big, that makes you particularly hard to stop. Okay? I always think about this, I don't know if anyone's into rugby, but I always think about this from um, a rugby point of view. Um, if you look around a rugby pitch, like you've got the forwards who are from a mass point of view they are big lads um, and that's what makes them hard to stop they tend not to be the fastest because they focus on mass and um, obviously because of other jobs around the pitch that they have to do like scrums and stuff but the reason they're hard to stop the, the forwards is because they're big they have a large mass if you think then about the the backs what makes them hard to stop? Because they're not actually, I mean, like, they're bigger than me, but they're not, you know, as big as the forwards, mass-wise. So what do they have that makes them hard to stop or that gives them a big momentum? And what they have is speed. Okay? So if you're not necessarily, if you don't necessarily have a big mass but you have a big speed, as in you're going at a really, really, really high speed, that makes you hard to stop as well. Um, can you think there about anything that has a particularly small mass, like really small mass, but has a really high speed, and as a result is very hard to stop? Um, I'm thinking of a bullet. So a bullet has a really, really high momentum. But not because of its mass, because if you put a bullet on the scales, I don't know, it's something like six grams or something it weighs. So it doesn't have a high mass, but it has a really high speed. Obviously, once it's been um, shot out from a gun. Um, so yeah, so momentum, if you think about it, as how hard or how difficult it is to stop something. So then you're thinking about what... Um, kind of what characteristics make something difficult to stop 
okay and the characteristics that make something difficult to stop is either they're really really heavy or they're really really fast or obviously they can be a bit of both um so that's how momentum is calculated momentum is based on an object's mass and its speed so the formula is here oh sorry all my colors are messed up um so the formula is here okay so the P stands for momentum and then the M stands for mass and then the fact that there's no sign between them means it's multiply and the V stands for velocity or speed. Okay, so to get the momentum, <coughs> sorry, to get the momentum of an object, you get its mass and you multiply it by its speed. Yeah, um, I don't know if we've, talked about mass before I think we have um but in terms of units because the units are obviously really important in physics the unit for mass the SI unit for mass is the kilogram now I know we've talked about speed quite a bit so you should know the SI unit for speed which is meters per second and that actually is the SI unit for momentum so there's no kind of scientist that's been attributed to the unit for momentum. The unit for momentum is simply kilograms meters per second. So it is simply mass and speed, just literally put together. Um, Okay, so we'll have a look at this question here. So a bus of mass 5,000 kilograms moves east at 15 meters per second. Find its momentum. Okay, so we go momentum. We can start using P um, equals mass times velocity or mass times speed. Um, the mass is 5,000 and we should always do a little units check. So it's 5,000, it's in kilograms. Kilograms is the correct unit for mass, so that's absolutely fine to use. The speed then is 15, and again, it's meters per second, which is the correct unit. So it's 5,000 multiplied by 15. Oh man, I haven't got my calculator. Hang on. Um. Let me see, can I grab my calculator? Uh, so 75,000 is what I'm getting there. Oh no. Okay, is that back sinking? Yep. So 75,000 is 5,000 by 15. And then you put your units down, which is kilograms, meters per second. Okay, now the fact that there is a direction in the question, um, let me pick a different colour, so here, uh, should tell us something about momentum. Do you know? The fact that there's a direction there, it tells us that momentum is a vector. We should know that anyway because we know that velocity is a vector and momentum is made up of velocity and mass. So the fact that velocity is part of it means it's a vector. Um, I'm trying to remember, did we talk about vectors that much? Not sure. Um, anyway, we could talk about it next week if I didn't previously mention. But basically, if there's a direction in the question, you should then put that direction in the answer. Okay, it's going to be important when we do the next set of questions, which we're going to do on Wednesday, um, <coughs> the principle of conservation of momentum, because what we're doing there is we have like, um, like objects that are colliding, so they're traveling towards each other. So the direction that they're traveling in is actually really important um, because it changes the question. You know, if they're both traveling in the same direction and they collide versus traveling in opposite directions when they collide, the collision is going to be different. Yeah, so um, the fact that momentum is a vector is important, as in it matters which way the object is traveling before the collision takes place. Okay, so if there is a direction on it, we just include that direction in the answer. So if you have a bus that is 5,000 kilograms moving 15 meters per second east, 
the momentum of that bus is 75,000 kilograms meters per second east. So the 75,000 is a measure of how hard it would be to stop that bus. Okay, so like I said, we're going to go on to the principle of conservation of momentum, which is um, basically the principle that governs collisions. So uh, kind of it's calculations around what happens if a car crashes into a parked car, if a car at 60 kilometers an hour collides head on with a car going at 30 kilometers per hour in the opposite direction, things like that. Um, we'll do those calculations on Wednesday because hopefully I will be back at school on Wednesday. Um, so for now, I want you to do Um, yeah, I want you to do question one, two, three, and four, please. And if you could put your answers, um, there is an assignment on Schoology. Oh, okay. I do actually want you to do four as well. My pen just died. Um, so question one to four, I'll put an assignment on Schoology, and if you can upload it there, please. We'll correct them on Wednesday and we'll do the principle of conservation of momentum on Wednesday and then we'll be able to do the practical this day week. All right, so give those a go and throw them up on Schoology. Okay, <laughs> have a good day. <coughs>